I didn't sign up for this. I thought, you know, Gita had just gotten this camera that she had just completed her previous documentary. Yeah. And, and we were on vacation. Which was also for PBS. And then, yeah. you know, she had bought this camera that she wanted to learn how to, I guess, you know, operate the camera better. And I had just gotten out of this relationship with a white girl who I'd hid from my parents. And then we had this family trip to India. So here I am on a flight, stuck on a plane for 18 hours while mom and dad are breathing down my necks. And I'm going through this like eat, pray, love kind of crisis. And Gita's trying to learn how to use this camera. And we're sitting next to each other. Yeah, so. and I'm sitting here like, you know, just trying to learn how to use the camera. And I hear mom and dad like telling Gravi, it's time to get married. Why are you single? You know, you've never dated a girl before. And I'm dying laughing because I know he's been in a relationship and he just broke up. And they're like, we need, let us help you, you know, talk to the girl. Like, let's talk about how to approach the girl. And I'm just like, oh, this is good. Like, <laughs> let's get this. <laughs> yeah. So it started as kind of like this home video. And, um, you know, we did have the idea of like, oh, it'd be cool to do, like, because because I had done like a stand-up show earlier where I had talked about this stuff and everyone was just going crazy about it and relating to it and sharing their stories that were equally like kind of like tragic but funny. So I like had this sense that it was like kind of important and something that we should cover, but I didn't know it would be a documentary. And then here we were on this trip, and I was like, you know. Maybe we can do like a Michael Moore or Morgan, Morgan Spurlock thing about this. Anyway, fast forward to after this family trip and we had all this footage and we basically applied to PBS of like, hey, can we make a documentary? Because in my mind, I thought it was going to be like one year and we're done. You know, one of those very like clean cut, this is a situation, Rubby's kind of hosting it. You know? Yeah, and we'll like interview all these couples and talk to them about yeah, the thing, you know, yeah, like but the footage... didn't know it was going to be about me, didn't know it was going to be about my family, yeah. didn't know it would take six and a half years to make. Yeah. yeah. And, but the footage. So know, how did it happen? I don't know. It's still happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a victimization that you're you're witnessing. <laughs> how did you get your parents to to go along with it? I mean, obviously at first they thought it was just home movies, but yeah. As you got more involved, how did they? I mean, they just did you just go along with it? I mean, they thought it was like a a silly little project that we were doing on yeah. some level, and as the project took longer and longer, they actually just got irritated with this supposed documentary. Because yeah. yeah, they didn't understand what it was, and then on top of that, they're like, "We don't know what this is," and also, whatever this is, is taking way too long. Yeah, when and, are you gonna get married? And it's keeping Let's you. It's keeping on... you from being marriageable. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because you know, the film took six years. Six. And I think we started in like two thousand eight. Yeah, I mean, it took a long time. So, like, those last few years were hard because even our friends were like, listen, there's no documentary. Yeah, I would get, I would, I would, I was like genuinely, like, kind of depressed and ashamed about it because of how much time we were putting into it, you know? Yeah. Um, So, with a documentary, you know, you have to just, it's verite, which means you're watching life just unravel, right? So, you can't. You can't force it. I think people are so used to reality television these days where they think, you know, we're going in there and nothing. We're sitting back. We're rolling. It's hundreds of hours of footage. And only in the edit, you know, is this thing coming together. So it took a long time. Yeah, and we also just put, like, you know, the film, hopefully you found it, like, entertaining and fast-paced and, you know, funny and all that stuff. I mean, like, the elements, like, the Harry Met Sally interviews or, like, the animation, which is, like, half-drawn and sketched and or the um, kind of comedic elements of writing on the screen, even like the, the expensive <laughs> like music that's in this, all of that took us a long time to yeah. do. Because we were also learning, at least, well, I'll speak for myself, I was learning how to make a movie while we were making this movie. So learning how to edit, you know, learning how to make a documentary, those were all things that... Now this whole, uh, the convention, the whole... Uh the Patel Convention. Yes, this thing has a method and thought behind it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. How uh, how many people hook up after one of these things? Do you know? So many. I mean, there are so many marriages that come out of those conventions. You know. Yeah. I don't know the real numbers. I, I mean, I remember. I remember, like you know, when we went to that one. That's in so the many that they don't even count. <laughs> I mean, look, you know, there's kind of all these kind of institutions that allow Patels to find each other for marriage, right? In the documentary, you saw me go through the biodata setups, these matrimonial resumes that mom, that the parents Patels pass around to set Patels up. Then you saw me going to all the, through wedding season and all the setups happening there. And then the Patel conventions, which is literally like a hotel lobby 
filled with Patels from around the country who are there. And by the way, specific kinds of Patels. So I don't know how many come specifically from the Patel conventions, but I know that between all of these, a lot of Patels do find each other. All the Patels, everyone in our family, with the exception of us, has married a Patel. Even the ones who are married in this, even the ones who were born in America, they've married Patels. And they're all really happy. They're not un-American or weird. They're very just like, you know, normal just people. wholesome, great couples. And that's the thing that is exciting about, you know, was it was and is exciting about making this film is, you know, they are our models of love. They, you know, in a time when like we have a highest divorce rate we've ever had in America, where the idea of family and marriage is in crisis. Like everybody wants to know, how do I find love? How do I keep it? How do I make this work? Somehow these guys have got it together. So I think that's where like the gray area, you know, it's easy to write off arranged marriages or these wedding conventions as something kind of different and silly, but they're the ones that are actually in happy, healthy relationships. And that's where we yeah. were interested. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's, that's what motivated me to agree to kind of do this thing that I think like to the outside eye is like, whoa, that's crazy. Like you're letting your parents set you up with dates and also these dates have the same last name as you and you know i think the experience that people have when they actually see it you know by the end of the documentary i think we've had so many people come to me <laughs> be like just told us. i thought that was really weird yeah. but now i gotta tell you i wish your parents would set me up that way it looks really amazing almost everybody who watches the film wants to meet our parents and have them set them up yeah. or talk to them about their marriage you yeah. know and what's wrong you say in the film that you know that you have an internalized uh need to 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 marry a Patel uh, you, you you say you know you you sort of got out of that in relationship with a non-Indian girl at the beginning yeah because you had this drive to yeah to conform yeah what drives that well, I think we all have the drive to conform if we love what we grew up with and what we have right so it's more like preservationist like I love my family I loved my upbringing and there's just a lot about it that I wanted to preserve. And, it, and I think the mentality is like, in order to preserve these things that I have, the only way to preserve it is to actually find someone who fits into it perfectly. Um, and you know, I think, I think for some people that is the answer. And I think actually for other people, the answer is actually just finding someone who comes in and respects this thing and appreciates it and is willing to mold. So I still don't know the answer to that question, but um, yeah, I mean, I guess people have to watch the documentary to see how it worked out. <laughs> Vito, uh, one last question. Um, let's talk about Tamara's style. <laughs> yes, style. Yeah, wow, I, I can't thank you enough yeah. for, she's for appreciating my uh, yeah. camera ability. <laughs> I, I'm thinking about applying for a cinematography <laughs> award. What do you think? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Yeah. <laughs> Award, baby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so you just just took the camera and said, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna document this." Are we gonna do this? Yeah, you know, I had just made my first documentary um, for PBS, and it had been, you know, just a directing situation. Do you want me to wait? Or no, no, that's a that's a metaphor for uh, your camera style. Yeah, um, I had just finished making a documentary, and it was my first documentary. I. I wanted to be a better director. I thought, okay, I'm directing documentaries. I'm directing films now. I sh I want to learn all the jobs. So she didn't like know how to actually. I didn't know how to operate, operate a camera. A camera. She was, yeah. So I wasn't doing it to become an operator. I just thought this is my time off. I'm not going to make any documentaries. I'm exhausted. I'm just going to take some time to learn. And then of course, like within five minutes of getting on the plane of my vacation. This guy is like just too funny, you know. I can't stop. We're having no. It was intentional. You bought this camera and you like wanted to learn how to use it. Cause remember, you were gonna. Yeah, film. but we weren't gonna make this film with it. No, no, no. But you were using the camera because you were yeah. gonna film like the the. You were gonna film dad. Our family does like a dad, lot of charity work. But that was for me. Yeah. Not for like you know. Yeah, I yeah, basically yeah. didn't want to get into start like, another project. In fact, even project. when we started it, she was really adamant. Like one, I'm not gonna be in it. Two, it's not gonna happen because making documentaries is really hard. And I don't want to do that ever. Again. I really didn't want to make this film, but I think yeah. the more it was, ju it was clearly such a compelling idea. It was clearly so much fun too that I think it just like you know every day felt like it was one foot in, one foot out. You know? I mean, how often do you get to make a movie with your sibling and your family? Yeah, in it's scary and it's exciting. Like, you know, it's yeah. one of those like oh, you know, but 
it turned out to be amazing. Yeah, and by the way, now we're all traveling together as a family going to these festivals. You need to go to our Facebook page and look at it. Trust me, it's the crazy. Dad is all Dad's on Facebook. Facebook now, and it is insane. He bought yard signs because we have no outdoor they Put them in, people just say, meet the Patels in people's yards like a campaign. Because he, he's not going to settle for no outdoor advertising, see? Just just go to the Facebook page. So Trust he is me. traveling the United States right now putting yard signs up. He'll also reply to you, by the way, if you, if you say anything at all within seconds. He's refreshing. I think that's all he's he does. He's calling people up in the phone book, Patels in every city. He did this them in the white pages. Yeah. Just call and be like, hey, I'm Vasant Patel. We're I mean, here. how can you not stop doing this? It's just, it's crazy fun. Yeah. <laughs> Always be closing. That's dead. <laughs>